everyone, and welcome to another Race Face Drive In 5 here on RaceFace.tv. As always, Jacob Seelman back with you, joined by our newest Race Face brand development driver and excited to introduce him to our crowd, Michael King Jr., joining us for the first time. Michael, first off, not only are we excited to have you part of the Race Face family, but excited to really get uh, introduce you to the fans here so for those who may not know outside of your local area give us a quick rundown where you're from what you race and what's been going on most recently to get you to this point well first off i'm very excited to to get finally on one of these uh driving fives i've been looking forward to it um about me a little bit uh, i'm from paducah kentucky originally and uh, i moved to Eldorado, arkansas is what i call home now um I raced, uh, I started racing in 2018 and we've kind of just moved our way up the ladder to, to where we're at now. We're racing a steel block late model and a, uh, a limited modified. So, uh, I ain't been able to do much racing this year. Really, uh, rain's been kind of hindering all that between rain and work, but, uh, the little bit we've gotten to race, we've shown some, some, a lot of speed and, uh, had some pretty good results so far this year. And we'll clarify for the fans too. You're actually the first dirt driver we have on the roster. That's dirt late models and modifieds. Yes, that's dirt, late models, and, and dirt uh, modified, yeah. I, I, I say that because at least the crowd up where I'm from in North Carolina, all of our stuff is pavement, late models, and modified. So yeah, definitely totally want to make that different. distinction. Yep. Yeah. I know your dad was involved in the uh, kind of middle Tennessee, Kentucky racing scene for quite a while. Uh, was that what ultimately kind of led you to love the sport and want to start getting involved yourself? Well, I was born in December of uh, 2000, and I was at a racetrack in February of 2001 with Dad. So I've been I've been around it my whole life. Uh, we had to take a little bit of a break when he started traveling a lot more for work, and that's what led us to El Dorado. He, uh, he eventually called this home, so we got tired of being so far away. Uh, he he quit racing and moved down here, and then we we followed a couple years later. But um, there's not a lot to do in El Dorado. It's really kind of a smaller <laughs> town. It's uh, mostly one of those towns you go to Walmart to hang out as a teenager. So mom and dad figured they'd uh, they'd give me something to do to keep me busy outside of work and school. So we started racing and we, we kind of just started kicking off right off the bat, winning races. And it's just kind of snowballed from there. You know, we, we were in a four-cylinder six years ago and now we're winning late model races. Uh, and it's been kind of that, uh, I know the late model step has taken you a little bit, but other than that, it's really kind of been that uh, pretty quick progression to where it's not taken you nearly as long as I know you thought to get to this point. Uh, if you would have told me in the middle of like 2018 that I'd be, you know, running competitively in a steel block late model class, I'd probably would have smacked you for one because of how much it costs to get to that point and, and, and the level of work and talent that it takes to, to, to run competitively in these cars. But yeah, it, it it's kind of the latter it just, just kept going, you know, it just never, mm -hmm. it never stopped opportunities just kept, kept knocking at the door and we just kept answering them and we'll transition since you mentioned wanting to win races and getting to that point uh specifically to kind of what you've done recently because i know this year's been big for you in the fact that you've picked up your first two finally um wins in the dirt late model including i know one uh, back just a couple of weeks ago at plumerville yeah that was that was definitely the biggest win i think of my career so far i'd call it um we raced with that series a little bit last year and that's a stout, stout field of guys. You know, it's, they don't have the biggest car counts, but the, the, the 10 to 15 guys that show up weekly are, are really fast and really strong and they go and they run, they run steel block motors. So they're, they're a little bit down on horsepower compared to like a full blown late model. But um, those guys will make, make shows with the super late models and run competitively. So it, it's really cool to go out there and show up and, and uh, compete with those guys. I was going to say, uh, to, to offer a little bit of perspective for some of our dirt people that'll be familiar, when you're talking names in that area like Chris Reed and Heath Stevens, who do routinely uh, race with and, and make not only World of Outlaws shows, but even when the Lucas series comes down into that part of the country, you see them making World of Outlaws and Lucas shows. So it, like you said, it's a big deal to beat some of those guys who have that kind of experience. Yes. Uh, last year, we you know, we didn't get to race a the full schedule with them. But what we did, you know, uh, Steven Crocker and Chandler Petty, those are both two really good race car drivers. And uh, he, they really had to push, you had to push to be competitive. And, and when our car would run, we'd hang with them, but we just weren't quite there yet. But uh, over the, over the, the uh, weekend at the dome this past year at the gateway dirt nationals, uh, we got hooked up with our new shock builder and he, he's really turned our program around. Okay. So 
we'll stop there for just a second. And I, I want to make a, have you make the point because you told me the first time that we talked that Gateway Dirt is arguably your most favorite event that you've had the opportunity to run so for uh, or to run so far, I should say. What is it about racing at the Dome for people who have never been there that's just so unique? It's it's really the environment more than it is anything else. It's just so crazy to roll from the garage inside the you know air inside the dome in the in the pits and to roll out. Uh, you go outside and there'll be people taking pictures or you know of workers will be out there. You'll fuel up and you'll drive back in there and to drive back in the dome underneath the stands and to see how many people are all you know just all making so much noise while there's racing going on. You know you're pulling through there. It's just it's so unreal. To be like, man, I'm fixing a race in front of, there's 30,000 people here. It's, it's just crazy for a dirt race. For for someone like me, especially, it's more of a sure. local guy. I, I haven't been racing for that long. So to go out there and to race with some of the people that are on the racetrack with me and in front of all these people, it's just, it's so, it's so much fun. It's awesome. I was going to say people, uh, people that have never been to the dome uh, to paint the picture. I mean, it's, it's pretty much like a stadium style racetrack for dirt late models, which is, you know, you figure a local track or even some of the more prestigious tracks like in Eldora, maybe seat 15,000 people. And like you said, when you get the stadium seating kind of built up around the racetrack with how the domes got it, like you said, that's probably double the capacity of what you'd see at like an Eldora or a Knoxville. Eldora would probably be the closest place they could fit about like what the dome does. It, it It's a pretty big facility, but I still think the dome holds a little bit more. It's just, it's electric. It's, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever been to. And not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I'm assuming that is on the hopeful agenda before the end of your season is to go back to the dome this year. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I've got the vacation time put in at work to go ahead and, and go for that weekend. But, uh, it's just going to matter of, of making sure that you get registered in time before all the, the, uh, the seats fill up or the, the registration, um, fills up is, is kind of the big thing there. Uh, there's a lot of rumors going around and Kenny Wallace touched on it a little bit uh, at the end of last year. This might be the last time for the dome. So the tickets are going to be, it's going to be like, you've got to be on it because everybody is going to be trying to register for this race. And I'm just hoping I'm, I'm lucky enough to go. Cause obviously I, I don't have, I don't have the name to, to, to get a provisional right. pulled in there or anything. So it's kind of just luck for someone like me to get in. I hope it's not the last dome race just because the popularity of, of that whole deal has exploded the last couple of years. It's really become such a crown jewel there um, at the end of the year that, that pulls so many of the top guys from all over the country. I just, you know, I, I, I hope that rumor's not true because I feel like it would be a shame for, for the dirt crowd to lose that given how much it's built up. And you've seen that. I would think it would be a travesty for our sport if we lost out on the dome and, and maybe it, it, it fits so well in St. Louis just because of the, the amount of dirt racing and history around that area. Mm -hmm. um, just around those couple of States around St. Louis, even just, it, it's so prestigious there, but I think they could take it anywhere and still make it just, just work just as well. But it, it would be a shame if they, if they lost St. Louis as the day, sure. but it might not be, you know, it, it's just like Kenny Wallace was talking about. It's really hard on the dome itself. The cleanup's right. hard. The prep is hard. It's just, it's understandable that they, they might not want to do it again, but it, it would be a shame. Sure. Now, turning it back to what you've got directly upcoming, I know the rain has kind of kicked you guys in the butt a little bit the last three weeks or so, but at least the good news is, we hope, as long as the weather cooperates, you've got a lot of racing planned for the month of June. We have every weekend... Other than the 15th, I'll be off because of work that weekend. But every other weekend, we will be somewhere racing something, regardless, uh, just barring the weather. You know, it's got to be a reasonable right. drive. You know, I can't make a 12-hour drive to on a on a regular weekend like that. But but anywhere that's local, you know, we'll, we'll, go, we'll travel five to six hours to try to get somewhere. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you talk about kind of some of the dirt tracks that people know in your area. Um, I know the one that I'm becoming familiar with is is Plumerville, the track in Arkansas, which I it's easier it's easier to roll off the tongue than two dollar pistol motor speedway, which I still <laughs> I still say is the most unique yeah. racetrack name I've ever heard in my life. Um, you've got the Batesville half mile um, down there. You've got Big O Speedway just into Texas, which has hosted some World of Outlaws races, uh, both sprint cars and late models in the past. So, you know, a, lo a lot of really, you know, 
I guess people don't necessarily think of the Arkansas, Texas area at first as being kind of a hotbed, but there, there's a lot of good racetracks and a lot of competitive racing down where you're at that maybe people just, it, it's kind of a diamond in the rough, I'd say. And I, I'll tell you what, you know, you hit on Batesville and, and Big O had some World of Outlaw stuff, but it, the Arklatex area is fixing to be on the map for dirt late modern racing because the World of Outlaws has two shows here in September and they're going to go to two of our most prestigious facilities boot hill and rocket uh, raceway park are two of the best racetracks i've ever been to um they're running incredibly well the racing is fantastic there every weekend on a regular night um th those two races are going to put this little area on the map but there is a ton of racing all over the place in the arklatex area i'm glad you mentioned boot hill because i actually got to go out there gosh this would have been seven or eight years ago probably for a uscs 360 sprint car show and even then was impressed with how they had the facility at that point so that's gonna that's gonna be a fun one for sure and for you real quick um we've talked about on the track what is michael king's life like world like off the racetrack i know obviously <laughs> work is a big part of that you work in a chemical plant regularly but uh mm -hmm. you also have a very 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 extensive diecast collection yeah I'll, I'll show it i had this one ready we talked about it a little bit earlier but i, I hopefully it'll unblur uh it's our car from this year it's kind of it's kind of working but uh i've got i think i'm closing out on 400 um dad collected for the longest time uh before he 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 would get them for Christmas or whatever. He's a big Dale Earnhardt guy. So I've inherited, mm -hmm. you know, a good 10, 15 Dale Earnhardt cars. Nice. And uh, I started collecting really kind of seriously uh, back in like 2013 or 2012 is when I really started like, Hey, I, this is something I really enjoy. And I've just kind of done it as like my side thing. You know, I've never put it above anything else. It's, right. it's just one of those things like, Hey, I worked, you know, if I work 15 hours overtime in a week, I might take a hundred bucks out of that and, and throw it towards a new car or something. Okay, I obviously out of 400 diecasts, it's hard to pick a particular favorite, but is there one that that sticks out to you maybe that you've gotten a hold of more recently? I uh, it's been a little bit since I got it, but my first NASCAR race I went to, Eric Jones won, and at the time I didn't really have anybody in the lower series with with Chase Elliott moving up. Uh he was my guy at the time in the lower series, so I kind of attached to Eric Jones and he won the first race I was ever at. So uh, I actually have a prototype of his first win Xfinity diecast. And nice. those are like one of one or one of four. There's, there's not very many of those. And I ended up getting a hold of it and getting it autographed. So nice between, I... between it'd be between that or my Jimmy Johnson. He, uh, he won the, the, uh, the fall race at Texas. And I, I have the, there you go. the Chrome version of that car uh, autographed. That's right. That would have been, if I remember right, Eric's first Xfinity win. that would have been Texas, wouldn't it? Yep. It was Texas in the spring of 15 shoot <laughs> yeah Stop. it's, it's been a long time it's been a long time <laughs> you're date you're you're dating us and making us feel old real quick i feel old I, man i was 14 when that happened it's been 10 oh, years man Almost. all right michael well as all it's a pleasure this is going to be the first of many as we know so we'll cross our fingers that the weather cooperates we have a lot of racing to talk about at the end of, of next month and uh a lot to uh talk about and get out to the fans yeah, I'm really excited to hopefully we'll get something in this weekend. I'm, I'm just ready to get back behind the wheel. That's Michael King Jr. My name's Jacob Seelman. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Race Face Drive-In 5. We'll see you next time on RaceFace.tv.